Shotguns are an interesting weapon when creating an FPS shooter. They're not like any other weapon that you find in games. Most other weapons, you just fire once. The gun shoots in a straight line, you check for a hit, apply damage, it's super simple. But shotguns are an exception to the behavior of your standard FPS weapon. They behave so much differently. You have a shell that shoots pellets, and each one of those should do damage. It can be really difficult to design and balance such a weapon, but it's not one of those you can leave on the cutting room floor if you're making an FPS game. In some circumstances, the shotgun is my favorite weapon to use. In Crisis, I use it almost exclusively, going in stealth and popping out at close range to pick off an enemy, and then going straight back into the shadows while the NPCs went into a panic only to repeat the process again and again. Likewise, in Halo, I love to have one around for those pesky sword wielding elites. Basically, in close range, it's the weapon I want to use. So, I absolutely need to design one for my FPS template. But first, a message from this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. If you're looking for an amazing, free, and easy way to learn more about computer science, data science, math, and science, then you need to check out Brilliant.org. Brilliant is fun and interactive, and they have thousands of lessons with more being added every month. And what's even better, Brilliant will customize the content to fit your needs. With Brilliant's guided lessons, you'll be able to explore concepts at your own pace. And if you get stuck, you can use the step-by-step -step solutions to get you back on track. As you guys know, I'm a self-taught programmer, so I've been using Brilliant to help me get a better understanding on topics like those used in this video, like probability and vectors. Since I was never formally taught these things, I use Brilliant's fun, visual, and interactive lessons to give me a stronger understanding of these topics. You can explore all that Brilliant.org has to offer with their 30-day free trial. And for the first 200 viewers who sign up for Brilliant's annual premium subscription through my link, brilliant.org forward slash shaft games, you will get a 20% discount. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to it. A lot of people have asked me if it was possible to make a shotgun with the FPS tutorial that I made last year. And I always answered, of course, it's so easy. All it is is doing nine to 12 ray casts instead of one or loading multiple projectiles. It's no problem. But like everything in game dev, it's easier said than done. And to be honest, at its core, 9 to 12 ray casts are all you really need to make a shotgun, but when you're trying to design a weapon management system for your FPS, it does become a little bit more complicated. For instance, the way I designed the weapon manager in my FPS template for Godot was that when you press the shoot button, the game does one of two things. It ray casts from the center of the camera until it hits something, and then it will either do an additional ray cast from the barrel of the weapon or launch a projectile in the form of a rigid body towards the collision point. All fine and dandy, but herein lies the first major issue. My weapon manager is handling all of the logic for firing the weapon, which would mean I will need to add a third variable to check if something was a shotgun and do the shotgun thing. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of this. This is like the same kind of thing like when your company does a massive layoff and they give you all the work that three other people used to do and they just expect you to do the same output and then you're behind on everything and they think that you can't handle it so they make you the and hand it off to someone else and then so that person has to ask for people to it. <sighs> anyway, this is where I discovered the idea of composition. So what is composition? Well, at its most basic level, it allows you to reuse code by combining multiple classes together to create a more complex object. Basically, it's like Lego for programming. Take my weapon manager, for example. Right now, it is essentially a massive class that defines how a weapon works in my game, from shooting, reloading, to picking up and dropping weapons. It's all here. There is already some composition. If you follow the tutorial, you will know that the weapon manager relies on a weapon, which is a resource in Godot, and it provides the data from which the manager uses when performing its actions. And the resource holds a lot of other objects like weapon pickups and drops, which are their own objects. So that's a form of composition right there. You can provide the object for each weapon and the manager has nothing to do with them except determining if it can be picked up or telling the drop weapon where it should exist in the game world. A lot of people favor this design pattern in game design as it reduces the need for massive 500 line scripts that handle all of the behavior of a particular object. I could define all my weapon types within the weapon manager and use a big switch statement. Uh, these are called matching Godot, a la Undertale style. I could even do the same with pick up and drops, but it would massively reduce the ability for myself and others to create new weapons because each weapon would need to be defined by code. So how can we apply this exact same logic to make a shotgun? Well, it's pretty straightforward, really. 
we just need to refactor the shooting section of my weapon manager. So the first thing I did was pull everything out that relates to shooting and essentially just dump it into a new class called projectile. And when the player presses the button to shoot, the weapon manager will spawn a projectile. I would still consider the relationship between the weapon and the projectile an association. There are, however, a few variables that are still defined on the weapon resource that are intrinsically linked to the weapon resource. The damage, range and spray pattern are still defined by the weapon. I think the range and the spray behavior being on the weapon makes a lot of sense. There's a really good argument for the damage to be on the bullet, which could give rise to a lot of cool design choices. Perhaps in the future I could add a modifier for a projectile to add or reduce damage. For now, I'm keeping it on the weapon and of course these parameters are optional so projectiles don't need them. You could override them if you wanted to in your project. I don't know, it's really up to the designer. So when the player shoots, all that happens is that we calculate the spray, which is a deviation from the center of the camera, and then load the projectile. And all the manager does at this point is call the set projectile function on the projectile, which passes on all these variables that are sort of required for the gun to behave normally. Okay, so we did all that work and we're back to basically where we've started. We've got all our weapons working normally, but we still don't have a shotgun. So this is where I make everyone mad and I go back to inheritance. I haven't shown this, but I still have the hit scan and the rigid body projectile combined in this class. And if I was doing true composition, there would be some kind of initial hit scan object that is done to find the world position. And then you would either add the rigid body projector or the hit scan component separately, depending on what you were making. That would be the best way to do this, obviously. I know I was lazy and I ran out of time. I might separate them later. The main motivation for doing this would be to mostly eliminate unnecessary and empty variables when making either a hit scan or a projectile weapon. I don't think it would change too much in the behavior, um, but it won't change what I'm about to do next, which is create a subclass of the projectile for the shotgun. As I explained at the start, the shotgun as a weapon is entirely unique. So I need to create a script that inherits from the projectile class, and then we can override that set projectile function. The whole reason that I did all of this was so that you could do whatever you want at this point. It prevents all these options being present on the weapon resource. And if it was all on the weapon, there would really only be one kind of shotgun because it wouldn't make sense to design multiple. That would be a little bit overwhelming. Since we're designing a shotgun, we also need to do something like nine to 12 hit scans in a circle or some kind of pattern. My secret hack for any predefined weapon spray is to use Path 2D. Uh, think of it almost like drawing a mask. Okay, so I'm going to raycast off the camera in this shape. I'm going to do a second raycast from the barrel of the weapon, which is where we've spawned this projectile. So we still get that widening arc. It's much easier to design spray this way. Um, you could also just define a radius and then choose points randomly inside of it. However, I prefer this designer approach. I add randomness as a, as a variable that I can add to each X and Y point to get some variation. So it's different every time. Nothing super complicated though, but this is where the magic finally happens. Within the set projectile function, I can create a for loop to iterate over each point in the path, which finally gives me some of that shotgun action. Now, making a simple shotgun is easy. Getting the balance correct for making it fun is a whole other ball game. And how we can handle this spread and get a good balance between close range being completely deadly and long range being totally useless. We don't want it to be too extreme on either end, which is why I'm using the path 2D. It gives me a lot, uh, gives me a much better visual indicator of how wide the shot is going to be. And even for the aim down sights, I can create a very tight circle and I can have no randomness that will be lethal, at least in my testing, up to 30 meters, which is probably not very realistic, but for game standards, that's actually pretty good. Um, and whether or not it's something you want with this system, it's so easy to up and change the behavior of the, of the weapon entirely. So if I got further down the line, and I've decided that the shotgun's overpowered. Well, guess what? I can just come in here and just widen the spray or I could reduce the range as well. I'm really happy with it and I'm going to leave it here. I will be posting a step-by-step -step tutorial for those who have followed the FPS tutorial and they want to add this in themselves or learn more about refactoring composition. So definitely like and subscribe if you want to be able to see that when I post it. 
As always, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a Patreon or a channel member where you will get access to videos in advance and be able to download the FPS Pro template, which will include an animated rig with procedural animations at some point in the future. Pretty soon, I hope. Or you can pop over to Itch and pick that one up on its own. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games and I will see you next time.